Welcome back to another episode of Anne of the Week. Sadly, Worm Week has come to an end, and so we will not be taking a look at any worms this episode. Instead, we are looking at a moth. The Ganges moth is what happens when you let a moth crossbreed with Cthulhu, creating a nightmarish and frankly satanic looking creature. Luckily, this is just a moth belonging to the subfamily Actinae, and not a satanic beast sent to destroy the world. These moths are actually first described by the father of Linnaean classification himself, Carl Linnaeus, back in 1762, when specimens were sent to him from India for him to study study and classify. It is unknown what his reaction to first seeing this moth was, though it's very possible he also got as freaked out as many of us when he laid eyes upon this nightmare, though he wouldn't have been able to compare it to Cthulhu as HP Lovecraft wouldn't have been born for another 128 years. As I just said, the specimens sent to Colonnaeus originated from India, however they are not just exclusive to this subcontinent. Ganges moths are found extensively throughout most of Southeast Asia, Japan, Iran, and the northernmost regions of Australia. They are only found in the northern parts of Australia as they need a more humid climate than the dry outback to survive in. This does mean that the majority of Australians can count themselves lucky that they do not have to encounter this moth on top of every other horror in Australia, but it's bad news for the northerners. Within these areas, Ganges moths are commonly found on farmland and fruit plantations for reasons that I will explain in just a few seconds. See, that wasn't too long to wait. Anyway, the reason Ganges moths are found near farmland and fruit plantations is unsurprisingly due to their diets. Most moths are herbivores, and the Ganges moth is no different, feeding heavily upon cultivated food such as rice, pomegranate, palm oil fruits, and other plants. The larval form of the Ganges moth are incredibly dangerous to farmers in developing countries in Southeast Asia, as they can wipe out entire rice paddies and decimate fruit plantations. The larval forms are very effective at this, as they are laid in large numbers directly onto the crops to provide their larvae with easy food source as soon as they hatch. Finally on to the explanation for what on earth the Ganges moth's appendages are. They are unsurprisingly used for mating. Their exact role in the process is to attract a mate using the appendage to release pheromones into the air. Only the males possess them as they are the ones doing the attracting. The appendage is actually inflatable, most of the time they are not visible, but when the male needs to find a mate, he will pump up the huge appendage to try and release huge volumes of pheromones into the air. The fact that these are inflatable somehow makes them even stranger, as a lot of the time you will only see the simple moths similar to many others. Only when it is time for the male to mate is the true horror revealed. Once the appendages have hopefully worked, the female lays rows of small yellow eggs onto crops where they will hatch and start the larval stage, eating all the food they possibly can and in the process destroying farms. Obviously we have already gone over the appendage in the room, but what other cool adaptations do they possess? The answer is, not many really. Other than the male's pheromone organs, these moths are very similar to many other moths, so let's go into slightly more detail about their unique appendage. The pheromone secreted by the males is called hydroxydenidal, and the amount produced by the males is heavily dependent upon the diet the male had when it was in the larval stage. A diet with more nicene bases, a type of alkaline found in types of grain, will allow the male to produce more of the pheromone. If their diet is completely devoid of these Nicene bases, they can actually lose the ability to produce the pheromones, which means they are unable to inflate their back appendages, which means they will most likely die without finding a mate, as their lifespans are very short. In the natural world, a lot of things eat moths. Birds are the main threat to the Ganges moth, but spiders and other larger insects can also pose a threat. The IUCN does not list them, as it's hard to get any data on their population size due to being spread over such large areas. However, the speed and volume at which they reproduce means it's unlikely for them to be under any threat. Plus, their huge range means it's very hard for the whole species to go extinct. Really, it isn't humans who pose a threat to them. It's the Ganges moth that can threaten humans. Their ability to damage crops means they are labelled pests by most farmers, and the damage they can do is quite severe. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it and if you'd like to see more from us.